right, welcome to the Experiential Learning Center's basic printed circuit board design video series. We will be covering a variety of topics throughout this uh, collection, but today we're going to be focusing on general equations that are useful both in analyzing and designing circuits, starting with Ohm's law, Kirchhoff's current and voltage laws, and finishing up with the power equation. So beginning with Ohm's law, we have it written that the voltage V is equal to the current I times the resistor or resistance R. In this simple circuit on the right, we could see that five volts drops across this resistor, which has a resistance of 330 ohms, down to zero volts. If we wanted to determine the current flowing across this resistor, we could use Ohm's law for this. We'll begin by writing our voltages on the left side. So we have five volts minus zero volts equals our current I times our resistance, which in this case is 330 ohms. By rearranging the equation, we can isolate our current as five divided by 330, which is approximately equal to 0.015 amps, or in other words, 15 milliamps. Kirchhoff's voltage law states that the sum of voltages across the loop must equal zero. We'll begin with this circuit on the right, and now that we have two resistors, in order to analyze it, we'll split it into two halves. This first resistor, R1, forms a nice loop, or completes a nice loop. We can see we go from five volts, we drop voltage across this resistor, according to Ohm's law, we can calculate that voltage drop, which brings us down to zero volts. As we go up past the voltage source, we return to five volts. So this loop, we can then write as five volts minus the current across the resistor, oops, the current across the resistor, I times R minus zero must equal zero. So zero equals five minus I times 100. Therefore, the current flowing across R1 must be five divided by 100, or, oh, I'll write it up here, 0 0.05 amps, or 50 milliamps. Now, for our second loop, which goes over R2, we have the same thing. We go from five volts, we drop voltage across R2 down to zero volts, go past the voltage source and return to five volts again. The equation for this loop can be written as follows. So five minus I, oop, five minus I two times R2 must equal zero. And we could put the minus zero on there if we really want to, but it's not super critical. All right, we got this from our previous equation, but we'll write it out just to be thorough. So five divided by 330 equals 0, 0.0, or approximately equals 0 0.05 milliamps. Therefore, or amps, whoops, that's just amps, which is 15 milliamps. Kirchhoff's current law is very similar to Kirchhoff's voltage law in that it involves a summation and zero. And <laughs> about after that, it, it pretty much stops. So we have the sum of current flow at a node equals zero. So we'll look at this node right here, and then we'll look at that node down there. So this node, we have a current I flowing in, and we have a current I1 flowing through R1, and a current I2 flowing through I, or R2. So to write the summation of the currents at this, we have I flowing in minus I1 minus I2 must equal zero. So we could solve for the total current flowing through our voltage source as the sum of I1 plus I2. We solved these in the last slide and we had 50 milliamps from I1 
and approximately 15 milliamps from I2. Summing these together, we get 65 milliamps equals the current flowing out of our voltage source. Now, the cool thing is we can treat essentially any uh, anything like a node. Um, and I'm, I'm sure I'm oversimplifying here, but you know this resistor, I1 is flowing in. We know that that current I is preserved, so it is the same current flowing out. Same with R2, and therefore the current flowing at this node we could write as minus I plus I1 plus I2. Therefore, I equals 65 milliamps. All right, the final equation we'll be reviewing today is the power equation, or P equals IV, or power equals current times voltage. So if we wanted to know the requirements for this voltage supply that we have here, we could simply take the current, which is 0.065 amps, we calculated earlier, times our voltage, which it's a 5 volt power supply, and that gives us 0 0.325 watts, or 325 milliwatts. Now, now it's great and all, uh, this is actually quite important, so you know you need at least that much. Uh, you probably want to go a little higher, maybe like a 500 milliwatt, um, or a half um, or a, a half watt power supply or voltage supply. But what about these resistors over here? Um, we should, um, and it's, it's always a good idea to make sure that you're never pushing too much power through a component, more than what it's made for. So if we wanted to know the power through R1 or the power consumption or power uh, output uh, that R1 would be experiencing, we could use the second form of the power equation. Using Ohm's law, we can simplify voltage to be IR, so we have I squared R. So the power going through R1 is equal to our current going through R1, which is 0 0.05 amps, squared times the resistance, which is 100. And this comes out to be 0 0.25 watts. And the reason why this is critical is um, this is a quarter watt. That's actually quite a bit. Uh, and most resistors, at least that we supply in the Experiential Learning Center, are quarter watt resistors. So this is right on the edge of what it can take. Uh, if you had to use this circuit, we would probably recommend using a higher wattage uh, resistor. Whereas the other one, the power being uh, output through R2 is uh, much, much smaller. So we have 15 milliamps or 0 0.05 amp, 0 0.15 amps, wait, 0 0.015 amps. Uh, we take that, we square it, and we multiply it by 330, and we come out with a meager 0, 0.0, eh, we'll call it 75 uh, watts, so 75 milliwatts. Um, this is well within the range of a quarter watt resistor, so this one should be fine. This one, you'd want to either get a larger resistor, or if you had to use 100 ohms, uh, get a higher watt resistor. All right, that concludes it for this video. I uh, just want to thank the uh, Electrical and Computer Engineering Department here at Brigham Young University. And also, I wanted to thank the uh, source for our Cougar uh, call at the beginning of this, uh, this video. So uh, stay tuned, and uh, we hope this is helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to stop by, uh, give us a call, shoot us an email, and we'll answer when we can. Thank you so much.